Yep, I did it. I've been a fan of Pokemon for as long as I can remember. As early as kindergarten, I've gathered Pokemon toys, cards, and memorabilia of all sorts. I remember waking up early each morning to watch the TV show, and pestering my parents to rent VHS tapes of my favorite episodes so I could watch them as much as I wanted for the week. My parents probably hated this stuff, but they still would cave when I would drag them to the theater to see the movies. What else could I say besides I was caught up in Pokemania? Of course, I was also taken in by the games like much of the world. I remember when I fumbled through my copy of Pokemon Silver, my third game I ever owned and my first RPG game. And I was barely able to read and understand anything. And I would play through the start of the game over and over before I learned that I could save my progress. After several years in overcoming many roadblocks through trial and error, I finally beat Red and felt a severe feeling of accomplishment. From then on, I went to go play Generation 1, and my love for the series only continued to grow. I dropped off the bandwagon for a while and was no longer interested in Pokemania as much as I was before. But my passion for the games came back in around Diamond and Pearl, and I fell in love all over again. From then on, I stayed strong with the series up until Ultra Sun and Moon. By then, I had progressively begun to feel slight twinges of disappointment from X and Y and beyond for one reason or another, but I still love Pokemon for its innovative creature designs, worlds, characters, battles, and more. The shortcuts that Game Freak had been taking in development hadn't bothered me until Let's Go came around. I decided to give that one a pass, since I had left Pokemon Go behind due to its inability to improve several months after launch, and I didn't like having two overblown mascots shoved down my throat while I was fond of neither of them. Finally, just this year, Pokemon Sword and Shield were announced. I was ecstatic. I saw an enormous detailed world sprawling out in front of me with so many new and wonderful people and Pokemon to meet. I was certain I was going to enjoy my usual trend of picking the fire type starter at the start of the game, and then I'd use Score Bunny to find Corviknight, and those two would be staples on my team. I was hyped to hug a Wooloo and meet many more new faces. While I wasn't crazy about Dynamaxing and raid battles, I was eager to give them a go as well. At long last, it looked like the Pokemon game I've been waiting to see for so long was finally coming. And then, Game Freak dropped a bomb. But with the transition to the Nintendo Switch hardware, with its, you know, it's, it being much more powerful, allowing us to be much more expressive with each of the individual Pokemon. And after a lot of discussion, we decided to come to kind of a new direction. And so what that means for Pokemon Sword and Shield is that players will be able to transfer their Pokemon from Pokemon Home only if they appear in the Galar region Pokedex. I have never seen Pokemon fans get so angry. Sure, they usually complain a lot, but never this much. The moment Masuda mentioned how some Pokemon would not be allowed in the game, people exploded and started arguing amongst each other. The fans started taking sides and a war began to erupt between Game Freak sympathizers and fans desiring a game of quality. As for myself, I was conflicted. I hadn't liked the direction Pokemon had been going ever since I've dealt with the evil that is Pokemon Bank, which I never got working anyway. And this announcement made me question my feelings about Pokemon more than ever. While upset at the development, and even more upset with the lazy and senseless excuse given by Game Freak for the cut content, I still clung to hope. I still believed they would probably patch a National Dex feature in a few months later like Pokemon Bank. Even though I stopped transferring Pokemon at Black and White 2, and was probably not going to be impacted by this situation, I still cared about Pokemon, and I wanted Game Freak to care too. Then a few weeks later, Masuda confirmed my fear. They didn't. Thank you to all of our fans for caring so deeply about Pokemon. Recently, I shared the news that some Pokemon cannot be transferred to Pokemon Sword and Shield. I've read all of your comments and appreciate your love and passion for Pokemon. Just like all of you, we are passionate about Pokemon, and each and every one of them is very important to us. After so many years of developing the Pokemon video games, 
This was a very difficult decision for me. I'd like to make one thing clear. Even if a specific Pokemon is not available in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, that does not mean it will not appear in future games. The world of Pokemon continues to evolve. The Galar region offers new Pokemon to encounter, trainers to battle, and adventures to embark on. We are pouring our hearts into these games, and we hope you will look forward to joining us on this new journey. For me, this was the straw that broke the camera up's back. Not only did Masuda confirm that there won't be any plans to implement all Pokemon into the game, but also that all games from this point forward are going to be like this from now on. This message was sugarcoated so as not to agitate the fans further, but I see it for what it truly is at its core. We know you care about Pokemon. I told you about the content we could have added with effort, but decided to cut for various reasons. I looked over the most viral reactions and see that you guys care about this way too much. We too love Pokemon, but not enough to make it good anymore. After the years of games, we just don't care, and it was a difficult decision because we knew it may impact sales. However, in the future we'll swap out what Pokemon you can catch from game to game, because you little sacks of money are just going to buy them anyway. This is the way it is from now on, and no going back. We already know you'll buy this game like you always do. If we're going to keep getting money either way, why should we bother putting in effort so you can have what you want? I know what it feels like to be betrayed. I have been betrayed by people I thought were my friends, as well as public figures who let me down. And even companies that treated me like a stranger after years of loyalty. But this... This was more than a simple betrayal for me. It was a blow right to my heart and soul. The development choices of this game have broken my heart, and I am disgusted at what the Pokemon franchise is becoming. I WANT the game to be good! I WANT it to outperform every other Pokemon game ever made and rekindle the passion for Pokemon in our hearts! And by God, I really want to get intimate with all the waifus revealed to us so far! But from what I've seen with these careless development, shortcuts, laughable visuals, and empty messages to the fans, Game Freak is never going to go back in that direction. That's why I'm not going to buy this game. And neither should any true fans of Pokemon. True Pokemon fans that support this game will only encourage Game Freak to continue on this path of cutting beloved Pokemon and content for future installments. If you want to play it that badly, then buy it used. I'm certain that there will be more returns than expected if everything we've seen so far is all included in this pitiful game. Now, I speak directly to you, Game Freak. Pokemon is the highest grossing media franchise in the world. In the world! The idea that you can't be bothered to use that money to give your dedicated fans a game of quality is absolutely revolting. Are you telling me that you're cutting all the content that the fans love about Pokemon for high quality visuals like this garbage? If my head was between the bad ends of two Tauros, both with a bad case of diarrhea, I would hear less bullcrap from that than from the heartless excuse that the fans were given. The lack of resourcefulness that plagues this game's models and animations is absolutely appalling. And I won't believe for an instant that these are a reason to give your fans less content than we have had before. The only reason that can be is that you don't care enough about the quality of this product to give it the time and effort Pokémon deserves. If you truly believe that it will be impossible for you to give your fans the content we are expecting, then I have a story to tell you. It's about a man. A man who I am not even worthy to mention because of all the good he has done for video games, including Pokemon. This man has since passed, but his legacy lives on in all the work he has done and the people whose lives he has impacted. That man was Satoru Iwata. When you were working on Pokemon Stadium for the Nintendo 64, you had no specification documents left for the battle system. 
Iwata didn't even work for you, yet he studied the code for the battle system and implemented it into the game. In one week. He is also the same man that compressed the data for the Kanto region so it could be put into Pokemon Gold and Silver. While this was the sorry excuse for Kanto we would have gotten from you if he hadn't stepped in. Those are only a few of the contributions this one man had made for everyone. I have no right to speak on his behalf, or even think such a thought. But what would Iwata say if he saw the Pokemon games of today in this state? Do you think he would let this fly for even a moment? How can you call this a quality game if you don't know how to keep a bracelet attached to someone's arm? Is the fact that your workforce is divided between different projects that detrimental? Are you trying to tell me that while Iwata cut his own salary to make up for the underselling of products, you can't be troubled to get off your throne of golden Pikachu merchandise to hire more programmers to work on your games? Every time I look at Pokemon Sword and Shield now, I only see more problems. The problem isn't that I hate Pokemon. It's that I love it. I still find my old Pokemon cards and other memorabilia from time to time and smile whenever I see nostalgic moments from the TV show. Lord knows I love to go back and play the games that made me the passionate Pokemon nerd that I am. Then I see how you treat this beloved franchise now and my heart aches. I have to leave everything that I've seen and loved about this new game behind. I want to encounter new Pokemon, battle trainers, and embark on adventures. But until you show that you care, Pokemon is a dead franchise to me.